Hey everyone, John Cora here, McClinton Mitsubishi, and what you're looking at right now is a 2020 Mitsubishi Eclipse Cross with super all-wheel control. And this is a continuation of the video we did yesterday where we focused on the all-wheel drive system slash four-wheel drive system of the Outlander Sport, which you can see over there in the distance. That's what we did yesterday. Um, and I mentioned in that video that the all-wheel drive system here on these Eclipse crosses and uh, on the Outlander as well is different than the Outlander Sport. So today I'm going to do my best to explain to you how super all-wheel control works. And I will apologize, I'm not an engineer. I went to WVU, so I'm not the best at any type of science, but I want to do my best to explain how super all-wheel control is different than what we saw on the Outlander yesterday. Before I do that, though, I just want to show you something again real quick. Uh, this Eclipse Cross is equipped with forward collision mitigation. And in 2021, every Mitsubishi vehicle, hashtag Diamond Squad, will be equipped with forward collision mitigation. That will be standard from the factory on all the vehicles. Um, but we also had some snow last night. I just want to do a quick reminder. You know, when you're getting your car ready, make sure <clears throat> that camera there is clear of snow before you set out on your journey because if the camera is blocked, the forward collision mitigation will not work. And especially during winter time, that's one of the most important times you wanna use that forward collision mitigation. Not everyone drives well during winter, so it's always nice to have that safety aid. Um, lane keep assist is standard in 2021, as well as uh, automatic wipers, which is really cool. But once again, we're gonna look at the all-wheel drive system here. Once again, on the Eclipse Cross, they call it super all-wheel control. And the best way to see if your Eclipse Cross has that is that little sticker there on the back. Super all-wheel control was first developed for the Mitsubishi Lancer Evolution, which we all remember how cool that car was. And then Mitsubishi decided to put it into its other vehicle. So let's dive inside real quick and take a look. All right, now we're inside of the Mitsubishi Eclipse Cross and I'm gonna turn my heated seat on real quick because it's very cold out. It says it's 35 degrees. I've earned it. <laughs> My, that's one of the nice things about Mitsubishi's is heated seats are available in most trims. So keep that in mind when you're shopping. Okay, so we have super all-wheel control. And another way to tell if your vehicle has it is this little switch down here. And it is a little bit different than what we saw on the Outlander Sport yesterday. So... What I'm going to show you real quick is just a quick differences. Now, pretty much yesterday on the, the Outlander Sport, you had um, off, auto, and lock. On the Eclipse Cross here, you actually have different drive modes. So right there, you can see it's currently in auto. The way super all-wheel control works in the Eclipse Cross is your, your default setting is auto. So with auto, it's pretty much going to be in two-wheel drive, unless the wheels detect some sort of slip. So if we're driving along and like if it's a nice day out, uh, you hit a wet spot and you lose traction, the, the back wheels will kick on. The reason why it's primarily in front wheel drive during this setting is it's the most efficient. It's the most fuel efficient. However, just like in the Eclipse, or sorry, the Outlander Sport yesterday, if we go down here, let me switch hands and hit this button. It'll switch the drive mode there. And I know you just saw it go away. Let me do that again here real quick. So we hit it and it goes to snow. Now, if you're like me, you won't take snow for an answer. And what I want to explain now is why there's a snow mode. Essentially, this is a different drive mode. Uh, this system is more technologically advanced than what we have in the Outlander Sport. So it's got different modes. The computer is going to tell the all-wheel drive system to react differently depending upon your setting. So. Here we were in snow, so we're going to do some different things. While the vehicle is still primarily front wheel drive in the snow mode, uh, it's going to send more power to the rear wheels. That way you're going to have a maximum traction for snow. Like for instance, last night, we, we had a, a decent amount of snow here in the mid Ohio Valley. Um, there were several times on my way home that my vehicle slipped in the snow and my, my vehicle's front wheel drive only. Um, especially going up an incline. Well, if I would have had the super all-wheel control, it would have transferred more power to the rear wheels. Um, that way I wouldn't have even, most likely in this situation, 
since that front wheel slip. Um, the computer is doing this within milliseconds of it happening. It, it's wild how, how advanced these systems are. And once again, this was developed for the Mitsubishi Lancer Evolution, which is a wild car. I wish we still sold it. Hashtag bring it back. Um, but it's for, it was a rally car, essentially is what that was. So um, not only is this optimized for grip, but the super all-wheel control system is optimized for performance too. So um, you're going to get um, a lot more feel with this all-wheel control system than even what's in the Outlander. Once again, what's in the Outlander Sport? Oh, sorry, Sport. Uh, or as I call it, the RVR. What's in the Outlander Sport is not a bad system whatsoever. Uh, but this is a more advanced and a more performance-driven all-wheel drive system. So just keep that in mind. And then you see your, your last setting here. Oops. You hit it one more time, you're going to go to gravel. And once again, the vehicle is just optimized uh, the computer for gravel. Uh, this would be great if you're going like on a non wet day, like let's say you take it off road. I like to go on back roads quite a bit myself. Here in the middle Ohio Valley, we have a lot of uh, like gravel roads, dirt roads. So that would be optimal for that. Once again, it's just adjusting torque and traction and vehicle or wheel braking to different wheels depending upon the setting. So that's how this is different than what's in the Outlander Sport. And I mentioned that it's different in the PHEV as well. Um, the, the biggest difference in that one is um, the, the rear wheels have their own motor and it's, you know, it's, it's a plug-in hybrid. So um, it's not a mechanical system quite like what's in the traditional Outlander. I just keep that in mind if you're considering a PHEV. Um, but yeah, if you're, if you're interested in more come down take a take a drive in one of these they're actually very capable off-road even though they're you know a, a, a compact crossover a lot of independent outlets have tested these out and have found that they do very well off-road i mean it's not a jeep wrangler it's not going to do any rock climbing but um, if you do some sense and have good tires this thing can go most places um, once again you're not going to go rock climbing rock climbing you're not going to go into like you know two feet of mud but um all in all, it's a very capable vehicle. Definitely consider it. And uh, we're going to look at the all-wheel drive system in the Outlander soon, too, just because I learned a little bit more about that recently and I want to share with everyone. So uh, if you have questions, give us a call, 304-422-6501. Uh, check us out online, mcclintonmitsubishi.com. Like, subscribe, comment, all of those things. And uh, hashtag Diamond Squad.